All right, so let's determine some initiative here. We've got uh, to roll in this particular scenario. It doesn't specify a start player, so we're going to go ahead and get a roll. There's the Russians. They have a three. Let's take a look at the Germans who get a nine. And so we're going to go ahead and let the Germans go first. Now, in this particular scenario, we're going to be playing six turns, so the Germans are going to have to move relatively quickly here. However, I want to take a look at a couple of things. We have the two German cards, and in any given game turn, the Germans are actually able to play. Uh, they're only going to get one card each turn from here on out, but you can play up to two. So, we look at the German side here. We have Conduct and Airstrike Attack, and the Soviet player must discard uh, all artillery cards in their hand. So that can be a handy way to break things up. Right at this moment, I don't think we need to get into either of those. So let's take some time to check out those Germans and see what we can do with them. So we have a Panzer IV down here. This is actually a little Panzer IV down here. And we're gonna go ahead and start with their movement. So let's go ahead and go the full five and the little explosion, blue explosion back there, means that they can move and fight in the same uh, turn. We'll still mark them moved, but that won't be the end of their work. So let's go ahead and get started here. We're going to go one, two, three, four, five. Now, these guys have a green armor piercing rating of eight and a high explosive rating that's also green of eight we can probably even zoom in just a hair here to take a look there we go so you can see that so the thing to know about platoon commander is that you are determining your range based on the color so in this particular case long range is five so they can go one, two, three, four, five. So basically this kind of arc right here, right? One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, and here. So kind of like this. They can reach out and reach out and touch someone. Let's go ahead and mark them moved and know that they still have the opportunity uh, to fight. And we'll leave that a little uncovered just so that we remember that. Let's go back and take a look at some of our other German units. Now we are at the stacking limit of two per hex in these two hexes. Those hexes can, those units can act independently or they can move together. Let's go ahead and I wanna race for this hill up here. So we're gonna go one, two, three. Moving uphill into the clear is just plus one. So we're gonna do four, five. We're going to mark that as moved. And we're going to do one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. If you start on a road and travel the entire way on the road, you get an extra movement factor. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So let's mark all of these as moved. And we need to grab a moved marker for these guys. All right. Now, in the upper part of the map, we have our Tigers. Now, our Tigers are going to be swinging a lot harder than the rest of our units. They have a 12 armor piercing firepower. So in this particular case, we want to take good care because they are actually with a red firepower, which is a long range, giving them the ability to reach out up to 10 hexes, provided that they can see that far. So I think I want to use them to try to get maybe into these woods, but I think maybe we'll have to keep them in some sort of fire support so that they can be sort of self-supporting. Now, in this particular case, we got a couple of things going on. We actually have some cultivated terrain here, and these cost two movement points to move through. We have uh, a city hex, which is uh, two movement points to move through for the city. If it's three or more hexes strung together, it's actually city hex, which costs three movement points to move through, unless you're on a road, of course. 
Uh, and then we have the uh, woods, kind of the forest here, and that is two movement points to move through. Uh, and it doesn't look like we have any special notes here at all around the movement, so we can kind of plan that out. So let's go ahead and take a quick move here with our first tiger up here. And we're going to go one, two, three, four, and he's done. We're also going to go one, two, three, and let's hang on up here for four. Okay, so we have now moved all of our German units. Now we're going to take a look at the Russian movement. 